Hey everybody, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the new firmware update that's going to be available for the Z6 II and the Z7 II. Now I've been lucky enough to already be able to install the firmware update on my Z6 II and Z7 II and that's obviously allowed me to test some of the new features that will be added with this firmware update. So as with any firmware update there's always those initial kind of bug fixes, the little tweaks, those types of things and then there tends to be sometimes the headline features. So obviously it's going to be mainly those headline features that we're talking about today. The main one that affects both cameras is the improved eye autofocus. So this is Z6 II and Z7 II. They will both see improved eye autofocus when you're either using auto area or if you're using wide area large as well. They will both give you an improved eye autofocus performance. The other headline feature is around the Z6 II. Now the Z6 II will now have the feature added for the ability to record in 4K at 60 frames per second. This is something that was promised at the launch of the Z6 II but just wasn't available at the launch of the Z6 II. And those of you that are thinking about a Z7 II, the Z7 II has been able to do 4K 60 since launch. It's just the Z6 II that couldn't do 4K 60. So what I want to jump into first is eye autofocus. So I'm going to do some comparisons between the original firmware and the latest firmware. And I've done those comparisons in auto area and I've also done those comparisons with different lenses. So there's going to be some comparisons with the 24 to 70 2.8 at 2.8. There's also some comparisons with the 50 millimeter 1.2 at 1.2. And then there's also some low light comparisons as well to see if there's any major differences. Now straight off the bat, one of the things that you will recognize or notice after you've updated your camera is just how much faster your camera will find eyes on your subject. So obviously what happens right now with a Z6 II or a Z7 II is if they see eyes in the frame and as it will obviously highlight that eye, but as the subject gets further away, it will default back to face tracking. So now, that distance has changed significantly and your camera can see eyes when they are much smaller in the frame and also when they are much further away from the camera itself. So you, it's fairly clear to see that difference in the comparisons that I've done. I'll, I'll run those comparisons, I'll play them side by side so you get a, a look at how the camera would react differently to a subject that's moving closer or further away to the camera, just in a couple of different scenarios. So you get an idea about whether that improvement is worthwhile for you. Obviously this is only affecting eye autofocus, so it's not going to be something that if you're using dynamic or single point, you know, those types of focusing modes aren't going to be affected here. This is an eye autofocus improvement, so do keep that in mind. <laughs> 
as you can clearly see, even in these screenshots here, the new firmware is just consistently picking the eyes out at a much further away distance, irregardless of focal length compared to the older firmware. So for those of you that are using your cameras for portraiture, people, and so on, you can just use that eye autofocus with a subject that's at a further distance away. Now, I do also appreciate that as your subject gets further away, there is just obviously going to be an increase in your depth of field. So that obviously then begs the question, is there a requirement to need eye autofocus? Because at certain distances, face tracking is good enough because technically, as long as the camera is focusing on the face, the eyes and the entire face are in focus anyway, because at certain distances, your depth of field is large enough anyway. I think this is, I think this is more of an interface change where the camera is just showing you that it can focus on the eyes or the camera is showing you that it can see the eyes at those further away distances, but that doesn't necessarily mean that only the eye is gonna be in focus. That obviously is gonna be caused by your depth of field settings, your aperture setting, your distance to subject, what lens you're using, the focal length and so on. So there's obviously, so there's obviously a couple of other variables to keep in mind, but definitely, for those of you who want that confirmation that the camera can see eyes at a further distance, it's a definite improvement there. Now, as I mentioned, the improvement to eye autofocus is in both auto area and wide area large. I do think that wide area large, now being able to use eye autofocus and face tracking is one of the significant differences between the Z6 to the Z7 II and the original Z6 and Z7s. And the fact that that's still being improved is a really good sign because I do know there's a lot of people that really like the ability to just have that selection box and the camera can then just make sure it's looking for eyes and faces in that single box. Now, all of my tests are done in auto area because it's a bit more random and the camera has the ability to focus on other things. So I think auto area is a bit more of a true test, but also keep in mind that all of the improvements you are seeing right now will also be improved when you're in wide area large. So I think for most people, and in fact, actually, the most of the photographers that I speak to, they're not relying on auto area anymore. They're starting to rely on wide area large more because it really allows them just to let the camera know that they want to focus on this exact person in this exact position in the frame. So hopefully you found a look at those examples of eye autofocus useful and just give you a bit more insight into the differences from the original firmware that released with Z6 and Z6 II versus the new update that'll be available shortly. The next biggest feature is obviously 4K 60 recording for the Z6 II. And I just wanted to be really clear here because there's, there's definitely a lot, and I mean a lot of confusion around on the internet, as there always is. Um, but there's definitely a lot of confusion around this subject specifically. And the main reason for that is, is because I, I see so many people saying that the Z7 II, because that can shoot 4K 60, is now the, the go-to video camera in the Z series range. And I don't, I, don't think, I, don't, I don't see that being the case. I think that's just based on a little bit of misunderstanding. So yes, absolutely, the Z7 II is a great video camera, but it is not going to be as good as a Z6 II if your primary goal is video. If you are a main video shooter, you would still get improved video recording by choosing a Z6 II. A Z7 II gives you the advantage of good video and great high resolution stills because obviously the higher megapixel sensor. But if you shoot mainly video and you want a Nikon Z, then it's the Z6 II. So one of the areas of confusion is that the Z7 II can shoot 4K 60 in almost full frame. There's a very small crop applied and I'll show you what that looks like. A lot of people refer to that as being able to record 4K 60 in full frame. Now the Z6 II with this new firmware update can now record 4K 60, but it has to be cropped to DX and DX would also be known to those of you that don't shoot Nikon as APS-C. So that's a 1.5 times crop. And a lot of people instantly think that that means that that is less quality than the Z7 II because the Z7 II is shooting full frame. That's not the case. Key thing to keep in mind here is that the Z6 II crops in 4K 60 because it maintains its full pixel readout, whereas the Z7 II does not. 
So that's how the Z7 II is able to keep that larger frame. I would prefer full pixel readout over the full frame field of view. Obviously it means that it changes your field of view and the lenses that you're using. But the key thing to keep in mind is that the picture quality, the sharpness, the detail out of the 4K60 from a Z6 II is going to be sharper and more detailed than the 4K60 you would get out of a Z7 II. Now, I've done a side-by-side -side comparison, and I can see the difference on my timeline. I can see the difference when I'm editing in sharpness. I don't know how much of a difference that's going to look like when it comes down to YouTube compression and so on. So I'm going to run that comparison, but I don't know what this is going to look like on YouTube. So if it doesn't look very different, then that's fine. Obviously, not everybody needs the best video features and 4K60 on the Z7 II is still going to be good enough for most people. But if you really want to use your camera for video and the main use case is video, it would make sense for you to still look at a Z6 II. That is still the camera to go to in the Z series range. One of the other key features that's been enabled as well is if you have your camera RAW enabled, so if you have the ProRes RAW update on your camera, with this new update you will also then have the ability to add Blackmagic RAW recording and you'll have a RAW option A and a RAW option B. And if you haven't done the RAW update already you would still obviously need to send your camera away to have that RAW update enabled for ProRes RAW or for Blackmagic RAW if you haven't had any RAW updates done already. And that is obviously a paid for service. So don't get confused. This, form, this firmware update on its own does not add RAW recording. You would still need to go and have that enabled by sending your camera off to Nikon service. But once you do, you now not only have the choice of recording in ProRes RAW, but you also have the choice of being able to record Blackmagic RAW if you wanted to as well. So one thing I'd like to say as well about firmware updates in general for the Z6 II and Z7 II is this is kind of the first major in settings improvement firmware update, if that makes sense. There was a very small update that fixed a couple of bugs, but this is like the first major update. And obviously it takes it to firmware version 1.1. But if you looked at the original Z6 and Z7, all of their major updates were like firmware version 2, and then they went to 2.2, and then they went to firmware version 3 as well. So I do feel like it's actually quite an exciting time to see what other things they could add in via firmware as well. Now, I, I don't know what they're going to be, but if you think that this is 1.1, they, they could have said that this is justified going to firmware version 2, but because it's 1.1, I'm really interested to see what other firmware changes they could make to autofocus, what other things they could add to firmware when it comes to firmware version 2. As I said, I, I don't know any, what any of those changes are, but it, it is pretty exciting to see that we are now starting to continually see improvements um, in the newer cameras, obviously with Z6 II, Z7 II using their dual processors, so they're starting to get that improved autofocus via these firmware updates, so always exciting. Okay, well, I hope that you found this video useful. I hope you found this first look at the new firmware update useful. The firmware update is going to be available to download from the 25th of February for everybody, so you can't download it right now, 
but from the 25th of February, everybody will be able to go and access their firmware update on their cameras. And obviously this is an update just for Z62 and Z72. Hope you found this video useful. Thank you very much for watching as always. It always means so much to me. Hope it's been useful. Goodbye.